You guys ever wonder why certain things need a prequel? Me too. How's it going guys? My name is Zach. Welcome back to my channel where I love discussing all brand new things cinema and entertainment. And this time around we're looking at The King's Man, the precursor to two very fun action movies that I clearly liked. This was once again directed by Matthew Vaughn, who also had a part in penning the script of course, and it stars the likes of Ray Fiennes, Reese Ethans, Digimon Hounsou, and Gemma Arterton. One man must race against time to stop history's worst tyrants and criminal masterminds as they all get together to plot a war that could wipe out millions of people and destroy humanity. So as I've alluded to, the two main Kingsman movies are a good chunk of fun. The first one is especially entertaining to no end. Golden Circle... Yes, it is very goofy. The story's a bit all over the place, but <laughs> I certainly don't mind watching it. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. And The King's Man could do nothing but surprise me. I went in with absolutely zero expectations, so I was just sitting there hoping for a grand old time like the first two movies gave me. And there are some things to like about The King's Man, mainly the performances. Gemma Arterton, Digimon Hounsou, they're doing some great work in here. Charles dances in this. I had no idea he was even involved in this project, and he was great as per usual. Let's face it though, Ray Fiennes f***ing saves this movie from descending down into the dumps. Fiennes was out of this world in this flick, very relatable with the family trauma he's dealing with without getting into spoilers, but he's also not afraid to get his hands dirty despite his dapper appearance. Which brings me to my other positive, the production design. It looks great. These costumes feel so vintage and right out of the 19 aughts and 19 teens. The sets are very regal, no complaints on the creative design in this film. But here's the thing. I was just sitting in this theater looking at this movie, and I was mainly wondering why the Kingsman name was attached to it. <laughs> and that's really the most damning thing for me. Yes, I agree with the majority. The tonal inconsistencies are for sure prevalent in the Kingsman. There were many points throughout this feature where I was just sitting there wondering what this movie was trying to be. Was it trying to be a spy flick, or was it trying to be this political thriller with war movie under tones. And it almost feels as if, up until the end of this film, this script absolutely forgets what namesake it has. And then it's like, oh yeah, okay, here you go, here's the Kingsman again. Matthew Vaughn's direction I thought was fairly inconsistent as well. The stylized action spots are there, and they're well realized, but the other technicals surrounding the action when it just has to be this contained drama... I really wasn't getting into it. The war sequences are fine, nothing you haven't seen before. And what you have seen is done better in movies like Hacksaw Ridge. But there's also certain points where they're shooting at night and the lighting really wasn't all there. And it was really, really difficult for me to tell what was going on. And there was this really intense fight happening against this midnight background. And then the main source of light for that scene and a bunch of flares don't go up until after the fight is over. I don't know if that was a creative choice or what, but wouldn't it have been cooler if the flares went up? earlier because it was tough for me to decipher what was happening for the most part in those war battles. There are also moments where the script is desperately wanting to get laughs from the audience. And that's certainly not what I experienced. I did not laugh a single time at the Kingsman. I mean the most outlandish stuff involves Reese Ethans as Rasputin and I was just kind of sitting there shaking my head at how off-putting it was. Like, it wasn't funny. I wanted to go get up out of my seat and take a breather. While I'm at it, God bless Reese Ethans for throwing his all into this. He is stepping so much out of his comfort zone, it's insane. But I do kind of take issue with the facts that this casting choice exists. Just to recap, Rasputin was a Russian man. Reese Ethans, on the other hand, is Welsh. I'm just sitting here thinking, were there really no Russian actors to take this role on? Quentin Tarantino was able to find German actors for Inglorious Bastards. This is almost like getting, I don't know, an American man to play this rambunctious, heavy set Italian dude. And then the actor will then claim he's method, because, you know, that would be stupid. Nope! That did not happen! But you get what I'm saying? It really was, it was a miscast, unfortunately. As hard as Reese Ethans was trying, 
I just wasn't really buying into it. And getting back to the big issue at hand, it really doesn't feel like this movie is attached to the Kingsman franchise until like the last 10 minutes or so. Now, I feel like I would have respected Matthew Vaughn for taking on this project a lot more had this just been a World War One style thriller. If it's just a war film centered around trying to get the United States of America involved to help the Brits win the war, I would have been on board with it. I'd been willing to give it a pass, especially if Matthew Vaughn was also directing it with these actors and his style of action sequences. This could have been really cool. But if Kingsman is on the title, I'm expecting some f***ing fun. And I certainly was not getting that until the third act, which was a really cool climax. I'm willing to give this movie credit where it's due. The third act of this movie was awesome. And that's what you'd come to expect out of a Kingsman movie. Very fast-paced action, some funny one-liners, and some incredible stunt work, the main part of which involving a parachute. And I was watching that scene and I was enjoying it, but in the back of my mind, I was like, where was this the first hour and a half? I'm gonna give the Kingsman a C. Yeah, definitely was expecting a lot more out of this. But this is, of course, all just my opinion. Let me know what you thought of the Kingsman down in the comments section below. Which Kingsman movie is your favorite in the franchise? And why is it the first movie and also feel free to let me know what your favorite prequel of all time is because as you know i love creating this content i love discussing all brand new things cinema and entertainment with you guys and getting to interact with you down in the comments just makes things all the more fun for me and if you guys are new to the channel don't forget to smash that subscribe button as hard as you possibly can on your way out this channel is on the road to 1000 subscribers a number i'm hoping to reach very soon subscribing is not only helpful to me it's helpful to you guys because you'll be the first ones to know anytime there's a new upload over here and don't forget guys smash that thumbs up button as well this would be tremendous tremendous help in getting this content out there to more people and of course stay tuned for more exciting content hitting this channel very very soon i'm gonna be looking at a bunch more new releases over this holiday season including the matrix resurrections the tragedy of Macbeth, american underdog sing 2 there's a lot lot more to cover and also stay tuned for my last two marvel studios reviews of the year in spider-man no way home and hawkeye certainly a lot that you guys can check Check out on this channel and much, much more. Y'all are the best. Again, I cannot thank you guys enough for your support. And with all that being said, back talk, commence. <laughs>